than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change. This one thing This one thing remains. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. Good morning. Welcome to worship here online at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Thank you for joining us. You can find a bulletin and ways to give at our website, www.elcvienna.org. Thank you so much for your generosity. A few announcements for you this morning, some ministries that you can get involved in. We will continue to live stream worship Sunday morning here at 9 a.m. and also Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. In addition, we will make a very cautious and modest step into in-person worship beginning next Sunday, September 13th. Masks will be worn. We will keep our distance and limit our numbers. To attend, you must sign up online, and there are still some spots available. You participate at your own risk. Check out our email and web page for more information and requirements. Also next Sunday, September 13th, we will have a tailgate party in the parking lot at 5 p.m. That Sunday is God's Work Our Hands Sunday. That's a day where congregations across the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America do service projects. This year, we will be supporting the Lamb Center with donations of supplies that can be dropped off at drive through Communion, both next Sunday, the 13th, and also a couple Sundays after that, the 27th. 
Please check out our website and our weekly update email for more details. Our worship continues with the invocation. We are gathered to worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our special music is Love Never Fails You. In this time of pandemic and racial tensions, let us pray. From a worldwide pandemic of the coronavirus disease, from sickness and dying, from stress and weariness, from isolation and loneliness, from uncertainty and loss, we pray, heal us, O Lord. From the sin of racism and injustice, from white supremacy and systemic racism, from white privilege, police brutality, political provocateurs, destruction and death, we pray, heal us, O Lord. We are your children of all ages, colors, genders, and creeds for all nations. And all our neighbors, we pray, heal us, O Lord. Almighty God, we believe in your healing and love. In Jesus' name we pray, heal us, O Lord. Amen. Our opening song is Love the Lord.
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will serve you, I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my So without my mind, with all my strength. With all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. Thanks be to God. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the well, your son promised a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. Thanks be to God. We praise you for your salvation through water and your word, for the water in this font and for water everywhere. We are washed in your forgiveness, grace, and love. You satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. Thanks be to God. To you, God, be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We sing our hymn of praise, Glory to God.
Now it is time for our children's message. So children, please come on close up to the screen. Make sure you can have a good look. Glad to share this time with you again this morning. Hey, I got a new Wookiee joke for you. Are you ready for this? You know Wookiees, right? Star Wars Wookiees, big hairy people. <laughs> they are my favorites. I tell you what, I love Chewbacca. All right. What do you call, well, first of all, remember the Smurfs? Remember them? Smurfette, Papa Smurf, Handy Smurf, all of them. Okay, here you go. What do you call Wookiee Smurf? Blue Baca. Ah, <laughs> that's a groaner, isn't it? Oh, boy. Now, I want you to know that I don't just come out and try these jokes on you like as a first run. I have a little focus group of kids that I go to. I try it out on them, and I knew this one was a good one because there's a little laughing, quite a bit of groaning, but there was no crying, and no one passed out or anything like that. There was no rioting, and so I knew I hadn't crossed the line. But still, it's quite a groaner, isn't it? Maybe you can forgive me for that. Sometimes that happens, doesn't it? Forgiveness needs to happen, especially for dad jokes. It's almost like a requirement, right? Well, I tell you what, Jesus has a, a process for when things don't quite go right, when things break down between people, when sin happens, when someone hurts another person, all right? Jesus tells them to First, go to that other person, kind of one-on-one -on -one and say, oh, when that happened, I really felt hurt by that. To give the other person an opportunity to apologize for that, to say they're sorry so that we can say back, I forgive you, and mend the relationship. That's called reconciling, bringing us back together again. And you know what? Uh, sometimes, oftentimes, that's all it takes. And things can be just as good or sometimes even better than ever, all right, when we come together like that. But sometimes it doesn't happen that way. Sometimes we go to someone and say, that really hurt me, and they're not seeing it that way. You know, they don't repent. They don't turn around. They don't say they're sorry. So Jesus tells us then... Take another person or another couple of people and go and, and visit that person because sometimes we need some help from others to work things out a little bit, to see each other's perspective. And, and that can be very helpful too, but sometimes that doesn't necessarily work either. And so Jesus said, after you've gone to that person yourself and that didn't work, after you went back to them again with maybe a couple of other people to sort it out, and that didn't work. Then Jesus says, go to the church. Ask the church for help to try to help the relationship come back together, to try to give the person an opportunity to say they're sorry and for us to forgive them again. All right, that's three different ways that Jesus gives us that we kind of gradually work our way into bit by bit to try to help out our relationships, to help heal up the hurt, to come back together again. This is what Jesus is calling us to. It's what we call in the church a ministry of reconciliation, making things right between people again and between God and people again. Because whenever sin happens, whenever someone hurts, hurts themselves or hurts someone else, I think God loves us so much that God hurts too. And so we need to do something about that. And to say, I'm sorry, to say, I forgive you, is to say, I love you. Let's continue on together. That's what we're called to do. So for my Wookiee jokes, please forgive me. I'm sorry. I love you. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, you call us to repent, to say we're sorry. You call us to forgive, to tell people that we forgive them. You call us to be gathered together in that reconciliation, that ministry of love that your son came to share. So God, help us to seek out 
those times when we need to say we're sorry and to do so, and to, when we need to say I forgive you and to do so, that we might be gathered in your grace all over again every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our worship continues singing the gospel acclamation, Alleluia. Good news of Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of St. Matthew in the 18th chapter. 16th chapter, I am corrected. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If another member of the church sins against you, these are the words Jesus speaks at the outset of our Gospel today. It's the hook, it gets our attention. Church members sinning, oh my, and not just sinning, but sinning against you personally. We should be astonished to hear that church members sin. How on earth could such good and upright Christians who believe in loving God and loving neighbor ever stoop so low as to sin? How dare Jesus make up such an outlandish hypothetical? Maybe we need to have a word with him. I'm kidding, of course. Jesus is as about as down to earth as can be. Jesus knows us. He is one of us. He knows full well our capacity for sin, for falling short with God and one another. This is what it is to be a sinner. If you are a living, breathing human being, then welcome to the sinner club. All are welcome. I actually find it humorous that Jesus would say, if another member of the church sins against you. I wonder if he used a sarcastic tone or even laughed a little as if it was some kind of stretch to think that a church member might happen to go against all odds and sin against another. Sin is not so much a matter of if as it is a matter of when. It's not if another church member sins against you. It's just a matter of when another church member sins against you. It is going to happen. I see it all the time. I do it all the time. Sin happens. Sin happens because we fall short. 
Sin happens and it hurts us. It hurts our relationships. Sin works to split us up. Sin works to break relationships with each other and with God. I'm of the mind that sin always hurts two people at least, usually three. The sinner, the one sinned against, and God. God loves us so much that when we hurt ourselves or hurt others, then God hurts too, every time. Sin is a serious problem not to be underestimated. Jesus would save us from the pain and the hurt and the broken relationships with each other and God. Ultimately, on the cross, Jesus does save us from sin. And here in this text, he gives us a very concrete series of steps to deal with it in the church. It's pretty simple. When someone sins against you, Go to them one-on-one -on -one and talk about it. Don't go to others first or the pastor, thank you, or a committee or the council. First, go to that person and try to work it out. Easy to say, hard to do. If that doesn't work, then seek the help of others. Just two or three will do. Sometimes we need help sorting things out. And if that doesn't work, then get the church involved. Then go to the pastor, committee, council. If that doesn't work, then Jesus says something very interesting. Then let them be as a Gentile and tax collector to you. This is to say, let them be as an outsider and a traitor to you. I understand that there is only so much that we can do after going to someone three times and asking for reconciliation and each time being de denied, what else could we do? There is something there that is no easy fix to say the least. It can be complicated. Take time. I've seen it happen. I've seen church members and their memberships revoked by congregational councils for lack of repentance. It is a sad thing and a reminder of how awful sin can be and what it can do to us and our relationships. But you know what? In each of those cases, the church did not take away their baptism. The church did not say to those individuals that they could not participate in worship, outreach, learning, youth, community life at the church. No. And the pastors involved would still welcome them at communion. It was not the end of the relationship, only organizational membership, which could easily be reinstated upon repentance. The church did not give up on those people, and neither does Jesus. He doesn't give up on Gentiles and tax collectors. He goes all the way to the cross and resurrection for them. God's grace is for them too. And in that grace, Jesus would gather us all together. In grace, Jesus calls us to come together to work out our problems. It takes a lot of grace to go to someone and be brave enough and vulnerable enough to tell them that they hurt you. Likewise, when the shoe is on the other foot, I think it takes a lot of grace for us to set ourselves aside, realize that we have hurt someone Put them ahead of ourselves and say, I'm sorry. That is the work of grace. And it doesn't come from us, but it comes from Jesus. In that grace, he calls us together in, reconcil in reconciliation. He gathers us. We are gathered 
by Jesus, one-on-one, -on -one, two or three, and as a church. We are gathered to reconcile with each other and God. We are gathered to say, I'm sorry. We are gathered to say, I forgive you. Wherever and whenever we are gathered in that kind of grace, there we are gathered in his name. And there in that broken and blessed place, there are sinners. There is church. And there is Jesus gathered together. Amen. Our worship continues with the hymn of the day, Seek Ye First. We proclaim our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O oh God. Strengthen ecumenical partnerships. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Foundation and the World Council of Churches. Bless our call process for an associate pastor of evangelism and mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death, shape new paths toward peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion, especially the Uffelman family, Scott, Don, Dennis, Clara Marion, Sarah, Cindy, Brad, Margaret, Majida, Joan, Clara, Nani, Ardella, Jean, Ina, Daryl, Paul, Ned, Laura, Joyce, Karen, Clara, Paula, Barb, Mia, Lily, Claudia, Mike, Dave, Lisa, Michael, Marion, Clark, Bill, Carl, Larry, Samantha, and Helen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give work to those who need it. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the life-giving efforts of all medical professionals during this coronavirus pandemic. Protect them and give them wisdom, strength, and endurance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith, especially Malcolm Uffelman, Jr. Until with them we see your salvation, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Our worship continues with the offering. Offerings in support of our mission and ministry can be made at elcvienna.org slash give on our website or mailed into the church. Thank you for your generosity.
Family of God in Christ, may the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 772. Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways. in peace and share the good news. We will. Thanks be to God.